VRAM is an age-old debate when it comes to GPUs, and for many, it's still pretty misunderstood. Back in the 2000s, upgrading your GPU meant a significant boost in performance, mainly due to the increase in VRAM. At the time, upgrading means you're jumping from 32 megabytes to 120 or even 250. Fast forward to today and we have an RTX 3060 with 12 gigs of VRAM, while the more powerful 3080 just has 10. That could be quite confusing. In this case, the 3080 has less VRAM than the 3060, but nonetheless, it is the more powerful card and the better performing one. So how does VRAM impact GPU's performance? Well, it works very similar to your system memory or RAM. Staying below the limit, everything will run smooth and fine. Exceed it and things will start falling apart very quickly, to the point where even your mouse cursor could become lagged. In gaming, the same rule applies. Pushing settings beyond your VRAM's limit makes the game unplayable. The game's resolution also plays a big role. The higher it is, the more VRAM gets used. For this video, I tested 8 different games at max settings in 4K to see how much VRAM they actually need. I used an RTX 4090 with 24 gigs of VRAM, ensuring no bottlenecks. The next highest VRAM option from Nvidia, excluding the 1590 which comes with 32 gigs, is 16 gigabytes, which applies to the 4080, 5080, and even the 4070. So this test should be a good benchmark. We're starting off with Cyberpunk 2077. With everything maxed out, including path tracing and ray tracing, VRAM usage peaked at just 14 gigabytes. That's actually pretty reasonable, considering this is one of the best looking games you can play today, and using the latest tech coming from Nvidia, it truly pushes GPUs to their absolute limit. I expected VRAM usage to be actually more than that, but things will not be this good for the next game. Monster Hunter Wilds is the newest of AAA titles coming out in the modern era, but optimization seems quite questionable. Running at 4K with ultra settings and DLSS set to quality, VRAM usage hits 19 gigabytes in cutscenes and exceeded 22 gigs during gameplay, which is insane considering the game's visuals are not really groundbreaking. What's even more bizarre is that the in-game settings estimated VRAM usage to be at 7.2 gigabytes, which was completely inaccurate. I reran the test at 1440p to measure out how much VRAM we can save by dropping the resolution, but we ended up losing only 2 gigabytes, still easily requiring over 16, which is quite unexpected. Microsoft Flight Simulator. This game has a reputation for being extremely demanding. I flew over Manhattan, one of the densest areas, with everything maxed out. Surprisingly, VRAM usage stayed just above 14 gigabytes, which is far lower than Monster Hunter Wilds, which further raises questions about the VRAM that that game is using. Running the benchmark on Forza Motorsports with max settings at 4K resulted in VRAM usage just under 14 gigabytes, which was expected for a game like this. So it stays right in check. Elden Ring has a great balance of visual and performance. The overlay didn't work for this game, but monitoring it externally, VRAM peaked at just 8.8 gigabytes, making it very playable on most modern GPUs. Marvel Rivals at max settings saw VRAM usage just above 14 gigabytes, a reasonable amount for a high fidelity competitive game running on 4K. So the conclusion, how much VRAM do you actually need? Well, for 95% of the games, 16 gigs of VRAM is more than enough, even at 4K. However, in extreme cases like Monster Hunter Wilds and some other games which I was not able to test today, you might need more. The problem? Nvidia isn't offering more VRAM unless you are willing to go for their flagship GPUs, which at the given price are arguably not worth it. I hope you found this video helpful, if so, please hit the like and subscribe for future content.